Greetings. Greetings. This is Ish. Hello, Ish. Welcome. I've been hanging around just for this day. Well, a lot of people have been asking for you, so you're welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I have an actually sort of important message today. Because of all the things that we're going through at this time, in the energy realms and all these things, I want to talk about your children and those that consider themselves crystal children, star children, or indigo children. Do you understand what I am talking about? Yes. There is not enough attention brought to these people. Many scientists on your planet would say that these children need help or they are mentally, they have mental disorders or they need to be put on drugs such as Ritalin. You understand what I am speaking of? Yes. Let me tell you this and I will start by being very, very serious in saying this. They are not mentally ill. They are living a, in other dimensions as well as this one. They are born with higher IQs and they are having difficulty adjusting to this planet and this density. When you look at some of these children and you see the anger and you see some of the things that are coming out of them, they need understanding. They need guidance and they need to be brought up with positive reinforcement the way that they are sometimes treated by the psychological world or the physical world is that they are damaged and that they need help or they need to be given drugs to straighten them out but do not be ashamed that your child is different at this time because they may have abilities for the future that you have no clue what they are. Now, let me explain how these children work. Some of them are born into a world and they feel a great separation from the, they feel a great separation from third dimension because they are from higher dimensions. They are here for a reason. They are here to hold light for the ascension. They are here to bring fourth dimensional energy to the world. And so whenever great beings come to third dimension, it is sometimes hard to adjust. Can you understand that? Yes. And so therefore, be careful with trying to diagnose your child as mentally ill because it may just be that they are adjusting. Help them to adjust. Help them to become a, a more normal person by what you know and how you feel. God will help you with this information. Look up all these different things called Asperger's and ADHD and, and see what they say about them and see how they classify these people. And you will find that they are looking at them as not right. However, they can be right without medication. They can be right if you pray and if you are supportive of who they are. Of course, they're going to be somewhat angry. They cannot communicate the same way as they were able to do before. They cannot do telepathy the way with you, the way they did in their last life. And so they are thinking things and they want you to know things, but you can't know them. And that makes them angry sometimes. Does that make sense? Yes. And so be, let them know what you know. Tell them who <laughs> you are. Describe yourself to them and ask them if, whenever possible to describe themselves to you what they are feeling, what they are thinking, if possible. And sometimes they will act out on this. Do you know what acting out is? Acting out is they are trying to make you say something or think something or do something, and you don't know what they're trying to do. So you must explain how you are feeling. You must not ignore these actions. You must not ignore who they are. You must not just say, 
oh, they'll grow out of it. You must be very, very involved. Now, many parents that have children with these kinds of aspects and these kinds of behaviors are not aware of what's really happening. It takes a special parent to become involved enough to get through. You must get through because your love and guidance will be what they see as the breakthrough. Do you understand that? Your love and guidance. They are spiritual beings as well. They may demonstrate high intellects. Some of them have very high intellects. And that is also a problem for them because they are probably moving dimensionally between a couple different dimensions and learning different languages. And, and they're bringing back maybe a language from somewhere else. And instead of you hearing, hello, mommy, you're hearing, ah, e ah, and things of this nature because they are trying to speak to you from another place. Remember, explain to them they will understand who you are eventually. They understand all the things. Now, you cannot punish this kind of behavior. You cannot punish it because they do not know that it's wrong. You punish bad behavior. But you cannot punish a behavior that is questionable whether they know what they are doing is right or wrong. That is why you must continue with the attention and the explanation of who you are. Who you are is going to help them develop who they are. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Now. There are some of you that have these children that have already have been diagnosed as HD, ADHD or Asperger's, which now they have put in one category, actually. If you look it up now, you will find that they are all grouped together. Why? Because they are similar in so many ways that they put them together and they, they cannot find really a difference. But I want to speak to something else right now. They, the, also, the mental health community does not recognize indigo, star children, or crystal children. And therefore, if you bring that up to them, they will, well, they, they will just say, there is no such thing. There is not enough evidence to separate um, that kind of behavior with a star child, an indigo child, or a crystal child they will say it is a mental behavior and so that's how we must deal with it it is a mental behavior you have mental behaviors there are many people that have mental behaviors that are not quite the norm are they putting you on ritalin are they giving you uh, uh some kind of drug for some of you depression is a big thing and they will give you a drug for that however you need to understand that drugs for emotions can be very deterrent to a thought process. Not to say, not to say that some people have severe problems with depression and may need something to help them. But once they have come into the understanding of spirituality and the positivity that can be brought from that, the examples of others, the training up of how to bring your emotions into alignment, which we will talk about, then you do not need drugs to control your behavior. Drugs controlling behavior are actually deterrents to original thought. Do you understand that? Yes, thank you. Are there questions out there before I continue? 
There are some questions. I don't know that they're exactly relevant to what you're speaking about. So if you want to continue this train of well, thought, I would say There is one question in the room. Is it relevant? Yes. 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 Okay. Any relevant questions will be honored. Yes, I have a question. I have a niece listening to you talk about all this. Her name is Michelle. Is she one of these that you have been talking about? EDH, star child. Um, star children can be identified by their behaviors. If they are un, unnaturally intelligent and do not act normal for their age, they can sometimes be diagnosed as ADHD or Asperger's. Now, there are so many behaviors that are defined in this, these different things. Unusual beha behavior, uh, unusual anger, uncontrolled behavior, um, not being able to communicate properly, not, be able, not uh, trying to communicate in ways that you cannot understand. Does she fit any of these? Yes, because people think she's like uh, Down syndrome, but she doesn't have Down syndrome, yet she's very intelligent. She's very intelligent because she is trying, you see, these are kinds of children that I'm speaking of, and they must have special treatment, yes, but not drugs and not psychological treatment. They need the attention of their parents. They need to be understood by those closest to them because those closest to them must give them the attention that they need. If they pass them off to other people, if you pass off your child to psychologists or give them, make the responsibility someone else's, then how are you supposed to learn to communicate and to bring that child back into uh, a loving understanding of fourth dimension and love, example, so remember, don't pass your child out, but draw them in. Now, if the behavior continues for long enough and you, and you realize that they're needing something more, what is it that you should do? Where is it that you should go for guidance? You should try to find some other children of this nature. Try to find other star children, indigo children, or crystal children, perhaps that are slightly older and have been through this process. Because there are those that have come through. There are those that are successful in making it through, and they know who they are. They know that they were an indigo child. They know they were a star child. Perhaps they can speak to this child as well. You're welcome. How do you go about finding other star children that Star children are all over the metaphysical internet. You may find them everywhere. Hmm. If you can just say, "Are is anyone there? Star children are right here in this group, and there will be some." How many of you are an indigo child, or a star child, or a, a crystal child? How many of you can claim that when you were growing up, you knew that you were different? You felt that disconnect. You were not quite the same as everybody else, and you knew that you were from someplace else, and the communication was difficult. Well, I didn't know that I didn't think that I was from somewhere else, but I will say the communication <laughs> was difficult, for sure, for sure. Um, and how was it that you overcame that? Uh, um, you know, I'm just now actually re-examining that because I had such a sort of, and I think, I don't, I've spoken with you Ish before, but hello. Um, I, I had such a, a desire to have the connection with the divine and with God. And f at that time, that was so odd for people because it was, not just oh a little bit it was so strong and there was nothing else for me so you know that's not something very common with the child correct um, so as much as my family allowed it you know a lot of society and people even within my family didn't quite know what to do with it didn't know what to do with me so i of found course. that at one moment i sort of um i'm 
not muted it down because I never muted it down, but I didn't make it, how do you say, I let, I let it be a little bit on the side for a while because it's, it was hard to function in, in the world. So, this is something that is yeah. noticeable in a star child, if you will, is that they have a high sense of spirituality without knowing that they're being spiritual. Do you understand that? Yeah. They have a high sense of the beyond without knowing that they are speaking of the beyond, without really comprehending it. They have a high intellect and know things beyond their age level, but they're not aware that other people feel that way about it. And right. I see that within you. They saw that you had a great intellect. They saw that you had a great need for expression. That is very much the same as a star child, an indigo child, or a child that is trying to uh, find their fourth dimensional energy when they don't even know they have it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite a difficult task for these indigo children to come into this world and find acceptance because they are not understood. So understand them by telling them who you are. Did your parents tell you, you who they were? Did they try to find out who you were or did they just let you develop? Um, they just let me develop mostly. They just let me develop. They never said to me, oh, that's weird or wrong or whatever. They, you know, it's well, just. Well, that's excellent yeah, of that, them that, not that to I'm very done. fortunate. But I will say, like, within school and, 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 you know, your peers, you're very different then. You know, you're very different. And, and I had friends. I grew up quite normally. But I will just say, you know, I always had this sort of secret life, you know. Yes. <laughs> of, like. My, it's not. Really, it sounds like you were like, a little bit. like wanting to know God. The other stuff was, you know, going to school and going to ballet and all those things. But my real motivation was always just how do I get to know the divine? You know, how do I make that connection? That was always my biggest interest. So, and if you kept it, you you don't tell everybody because at that time you couldn't talk to everybody about it. People wouldn't understand or they didn't ex of course didn't not. share it. So yeah, and I didn't know any other kids that were my age that had that same. Um, it sounds like you were a little better adjusted than some of the others. Uh, I don't there are some of these small children that come into the world that are extremely unadjusted because they brought along so much of the past dimension that it's it doesn't work here. Yeah, it doesn't work on this uh, plane and th this density. So, are there any other questions? Does anyone you want to? Are there? Can will you take questions that are uh, only in this subject, or are you? Oh no, I can take other questions. Okay, well then, Angie, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Hello, Ish. Can you hear me? Of course, I can. <laughs> nice to meet you. Tell me, nice. are you a Syrian ascended master or a dragon? I'm a draconian. Oh, oh, that's. I'm an ascended master from the draconian species. Now this, I'm here by design to let you know that the draconian species is not, a, has a bad reputation in many ways. But I am also here to show the wisdom and love and unconditional love for all the, all beings. And, I know that some do not like dragons or draconians, but let me tell you that it is not about who I am, but what I represent. And that would be the information that many people need to grow and to advance in this age. And they have chosen me, and I am so grateful, to help humanity in some small way. Well, that's wonderful. I would like to ask if you could make connection with me during meditation time it so is I can have a possible. private I, see I would like a private in, talk to you you are in South Africa yes <laughs> yes yes I can 
Thank you so much. I would like to uh, have some interaction with you. You seem Thank very you. knowledgeable and extremely helpful. I'd like that. Thank you. Okay. Very well. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, we have Ian has a question. Ian. Hi, Ish. Uh, testing, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a question about, I recently had a, uh, a channeling experience where unexpectedly I had a contact with, uh, with the Greys. The Greys came through unexpectedly, um, initiated contact with me, wanted to reach out to me for a purpose of promoting their species uh, because they have a bad name. Yes. And informed me that I was also part gray. And I was wondering if you are able to confirm that for me, whether or not that is true, whether or not I am um, previously of the grays. You do have some heritage there, yes. It is true. And they wanted to contact you for a specific reason. Um, the reason they wanted to contact you is because they have recently, within the last several months, changed their thought processes and have become a little more positive. I'm not saying a lot more positive, but they are trying positivity out for a change. This is very difficult for them because they are not used to this kind of activity. They see that it has advantages but they also see that negativity was very powerful in its own way. But they are giving it a chance. Not their entire population is convinced that this is the way to go, but their royalties have changed and have done some very incredible things. They have removed all of the implants that they have given within the last 10 years. And this has changed some people's lives because some of these implants were severely hurting people. And now these implants have been removed and their personalities have changed. And uh, people are recognizing that and seeing it uh, for what it is. So yes, they are trying to tell you that they're in a more positive frame. Do not be fooled, they still have much negativity within them, but they are working on that. It is a, a work in project, and I'm not putting them down. I'm giving them great, great respect for what they are doing, but they are not yet, uh, there has not been enough time passed for them to truly acknowledge their, the purity of positivity. And so be very cautious when speaking to them, because I know that they are trying to do good, and they are trying to make a positive impact, but they are also still very much drawn to the negativity. I asked, well, they were interested in saying, and they're telling me one, that they, you know, they are unable to understand emotion, did not understand emotion whatsoever, but they wanted to be my friend. And I asked, how can you be my friend if you can't have emotion? If you don't know what that is, how can you have oh, a friendship? Me, they really explain. couldn't answer that. <laughs> yes. Let me explain what they mean by that. Because that was not really a very clear explanation of where they're coming from. They do have emotions, but they're all, very, they're all based in a negative thought process. These new emotions that they're feeling, they have not really been able to hold on to yet in a very permanent way they're very fleeting do you understand what i'm saying okay so therefore they will try to be your friend but their feelings of friendship are off and on because they they're accepting this positivity but yet uh being drawn in other directions but give them a chance they can be your friend but i would be uh, I would say to them, if you want to be my friend, you must uh, tell me how you feel. Because friendship is about uh, communication in emotions. So ask them what they are communicating with, other than language. 
Okay. Because I was very cautious with that, as well as uh, informing me, you know, that they don't have free will. Um, I asked them they, about it. Uh, that, you see, all right. Um, it seems like you've gotten someone in their culture that is not extremely happy with the takeover of positivity, and they feel like they're being forced into it. And that would cause them to say that they don't have free will. But they do have free will to accept it or not accept it. But it will divide these, that species. And there still will be Zeta Grays. And, but then there will be the Zeta uh, Gray Pluses, which is the positive ones. And when asked about their abductions and the hybridization program, and the Galactic Council's rules on, you know, no abductions on Earth. They said they are no longer, they are not bound by the Galactic Council when they have no authority over them. So they the can do what they wish. Uh, the ones that have not accepted positivity still feel that way. So be very careful. It sounds like this one has not. Okay. I just wanted a little bit of explain that a little bit of guidance because I'm very, very cautious and was concerned about that. Well, contact. you see, there are many species that do not follow the Galactic Council because they feel that they are greater than others. But let me tell you something. They are not able to do much abduction right now because they are being stopped by the Galactic Council. And that's another reason why they say they have no free will. They are bound by law not to do it. Okay. Thank you very much for your help. You're welcome. Um, next we have uh, Christine. Christine. Hello? She doesn't really have a mic. Ah, she has to be unmuted. Yeah, she had a question referring back to when you were talking about uh, people with autism and mental illness. And she, as far as communication, she asked, would sign language be a better language to teach them first as opposed to uh, spoken language because of the, their uh, inability to communicate? Well, the inability to communicate comes from the coming from a different uh, dimension. And so sign language, if it was part of the dimension that they came from, might be a very helpful means. But if it was not, then it's just communication in general that they're having problems with. So it could be a possibility, but then again, you would have to uh, find out from that individual if they would know any sign language. And that's the, the responsibility of the parent as to letting them know who they are and asking many questions about who they are. They may not be able to respond immediately or for several months or maybe even a year or two because of the way that they are seeing things and things are developing all around them in the astral, in the, in the uh, third dimension. But you see, you must not um, take for granted that they do have these abilities yet. You must find out and communicate first and uh, find out where the, the thought processes are coming because you will get some reactions. You will find reactions coming when you are trying to communicate seriously. If, there will be times when you sit the child down and they will be totally distracted by everything around them and not be able to sit and listen to you. And that is when you go to them in some other way. You find something that they are, they care about, something that they can focus on, and then give that to them, let them hold it, so that they may <coughs> have something to focus on so that you may speak, even though it may not seem that they are listening, you may speak to them and they they will be focused on this item does that make sense to you yes she was she was just also asking about uh the role of say music uh teaching chanting drums is a way all of these things yes amazing amazing how music can work how different metaphysical uh 
ways can help. You may be a drummer. A drumming might be something that will help to get through. Remember, when you're doing music and chanting, you're changing the vibration of the room. Not only the person that are with you, you are changing vibrational um, uh, vibrations all through the area that the sound is penetrating. Music is a very, very powerful tool, especially if it is calming. Right. Now, drumming can be very calming. It does not have to be loud and boisterous. It can be a, a slow rhythm. It can be something that just changes the atmosphere of the mood room slightly enough for them to focus. So yes, use as many metaphysical uh, tools as you can because they may respond to them better. I was getting to that in the future, but there's a, so much to know about these children mm. and so much for parents to know because I'm sure some of you have tried everything, but what is the most important thing is your personal attention. Your personal attention. Thank you, you for that. Do you think that would have made a difference to you, Karen, if your parents would have been very personal about this? Well, they were, well, no, uh, because I was a dancer and a singer, so I had that creative uh, input. Excellent. So they I allowed think that made a difference. Yeah. Yeah. I did get very good personal attention from my parents. So Excellent. not to fault them. I would just say they, you know, it was different for them. They quite didn't know what I was uh, on about. <laughs> you know? Of course. Yeah. And um, you have children like that, and some of you are like that. So, hmm. yes, remember, it's difficult. After a while, if your children are older and now you're going to start giving them one-on-one -on -one attention, it'll have to be a little differently. It'll have to be on their terms as well as yours. Yeah. It always is with the child as well because, like I said, some are very distracted. Very, very distracted and you can't even get their attention. <laughs> but you must try to find a way to get it so that it can be uh, a communication. Now, there are those that are so far out into the other dimensions that they cannot come back. That would be what some would call severely retarded. And although it is a mental disease according to your planet, it is a dimensional disease as well. And so some of you that, are, that have great high fourth dimensional energy and brought that through your child and it it became a developmental problem for their entire life that is not your fault but you do have to help them as much as possible and that is not to say that they will ever become normal again because there are some that just did not come through correctly okay um, next, we have David in the room. David? Yes. Hello. How are you? How are Greetings, you? David. Good to speak with you again. Nice. I, uh, What's your question? I have a question about, about working with um, special needs children and adults and, you know, crystal, you know, as crystal children and indigo children, how to help them heal like sometimes you're not able to communicate with them or they can't communicate to you properly and i just recently met two women that were interested in healing but they keep saying next time they saw me healing a woman and they were interested the woman that was taking care of them and they were interested in it and um but they seem a little worried about it and also just in general how to if how to send healing or know what to do to help them when I'm not able to communicate with them. I understand. Just be the example. Continue to heal. Show your unconditional love. Show that the benefits of the healing. Show how it benefits you as well. And they will come around. You see, it's all about who you are. 
it's trust issues with people with healing uh, with disabilities as well. They must know that they are safe. They must know that you are, are not afraid to use your abilities for positive good. You must be an example. If you show a lot of fear, then they're going to see that fear in you and they won't trust you. But if you show a lot of confidence, a lot of love, a lot of patience, they will come around because that, who doesn't want that in their healer? You cannot say anything that will make them believe that you are a good healer. You cannot uh, force them to try your wares or your healing abilities, but you can love them into an example of healing. Okay. And is there any different is answer to many of the world's problems? Because no one, or I shouldn't say no one, but very few are great examples in the world that people look up to. Many are poor examples, though they may have respect because of their positions or how they got there or whatever, but they are not good examples of loving people, and you wouldn't trust them to be your healer. But if you are a good example of a he person that is integral, loving, kind, wise, confident, then why would anyone not want healing from you? Okay, that's good. And, and I'm wondering, uh, when, when they're not able to communicate to me, um, how do I know it's okay to send them energy healing, or, or do I also well, send it in a different way? I can tell you this. There are those teachers that would say, you must have permission to send healing to others. When you pray for others, do you ask permission? No. So why Sometimes. should you have to ask for permission to send healing long distance to others? Their subconscious will either object to accept it or deny it. You do not have to have permission to send beauty, love, and goodness to others. It is not an invasion of their privacy. You're not reading your, their thoughts. You're not pushing them into anything that they do not want. You're giving them something that's beautiful and precious, just like a prayer is beautiful and precious. So do not be deceived by those that say, oh, you must have permission to heal. You can't just send healing to anyone because it's not right. It's an invasion of their privacy. No, their subconscious knows what you are doing. They will accept healing if they want it. If they do not want healing, they will not accept it. So do not worry about that. If it is not meant to be that they want your healing, they will not accept it. But the very fact that you sent out healing is a blessing to you. Okay. And is there anything that will help them feel safe, like when you're communicating with them, or is there something to do to, to talk to them about before you do the healing? Anything you recommend? Actually, words will not make any difference. If they're uncomfortable, they will always be uncomfortable until they see the perfect example of what they want to be involved with. There is nothing that you can say that eases the doubts of someone that has great fear, except for the very fact that you are the example of someone they want and trust okay. as a healer. So do not even try to force them or do not try to convince them that healing is for them. You may say, I am open to give you a healing if you want it. If you do not want it, that's fine. I love you. And all I want to do is heal. It's your decision. Beautiful. That's a good way. I like that. So they don't feel pressured. And they feel safe. No pressure. No pressure. Mm. Much love. Thank you. Much love.
Thank you. Leela is next. Leela. Greetings, Master <sighs> Ish. Greetings. All love for you from Mother Earth, Gaia. We, we love you, those who know you, and very appreciate you. Thank you so um, much. I recently, I make a friendship with Zeta Gray. Uh, he's from Positive Gray Group, and he's the manager, and his name is Nine. Uh, could you, could he tell us if, he, how is his progress? How, how is his progressing on, on heart level? Uh, because I invite him to associate with me, and uh, does he have something to say? Yes. Um, I know who you of who you speak. And I can tell you this. He is one that connects himself to positive people and positive ideas. He is giving it a good chance. Not that there is still negativity there around him in his world and in his peers and family. But he is looking at it as a change that is going to help his people grow and expand. And he wants to be a leader in that way. He wants to help others to grow and expand. And as you can see, he thinks that you are someone that can help him, but he also wants to help you in return. Absolutely. He's amazing, benign. And uh, I can also learn from him. And that is the whole thing about unite together. There is no species, no race, what we cannot learn from. And that is, that is the, the, that's the proof, because I didn't have any idea about grace. And I met one contact with him through Carolina in, uh, in channeling. And I, I fall in love with him. I fall in love with Zeta Gray, who do not live from a heart and that was the reason why i fell in love because well, I they're wanted... very direct they're, yes. they're, they're very direct and you love that absolutely um, and directness is something that is part of who they are and always probably will be um and they will tell you directly how they feel or not feel and that is why uh ian was talking about these the grays as well they're very direct they told him they uh, they told him the truth exactly uh, that's what it absolutely. is absolutely they yes. did they were they did not lie they and did not is, they did not embellish the, in the truth or tell them what was tell him what exactly was going on but they did not lie and they were very direct and that is already advanced stage what most human are not even on that level so human wake up is it a grace are truthful and at least they speak how it is so next question uh it is possible for me do i have the frequency abilities that i would ever communicate with mental ill child it does would be ever possible that i will have the abilities to heal them but more on the conscious level from my part let me tell you this you have what it takes to do this, but your belief system must come in alignment with that, and your love for them must be unconditional, which it already is. But believe that you can do anything, and you can. You see, what you can believe with all your heart are those things that are able for you to do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we have Eva. Eva. Hi. Hi, and thank you so much for coming. Um, I happen to be a star child as well as my daughter. I have a 15 years old daughter who yes, I would I like mm -hmm. who I would like to ask about. She's pretty remarkable and I feel extremely blessed. Um, well, my a question is recently she requested change of school and i fully understand why but at the same time this puts a lot of pressure on me 
and I am not as adjusted in this dimension as she is. <laughs> so if you have any odd advice, if I don't know if you can even see into subject which school would be best for her and who can I ask for help well, yes. with the transition. I see the situation, and you, you say that she is more uh, intact in this world than you are. I don't think so, I, and I'll tell you why. She would, if she was, she would realize changing location will not change the problem. The problem is communication with the world, and it is difficult. The, the problem is the energy of the world and that it will not change no matter where she goes. There may be a group of more enlightened people, but will she find them? That is not uh, necess necessarily true. What she must change is how she looks at the situation. The situation is difficult, but changing locations will not change how things are and I would love to sit and speak to her about this but I but I understand how she feels and I know that she feels that perhaps the change of uh, be, a, a new start would be better a new start at, from the beginning with some of uh, different people she might react differently She's learned many things, and so she thinks that a new start would bring things right into order. Well, guess what? Unless you can handle the things that you are dealing with now, a new beginning will only bring the same problems. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, because absolutely. Because you've not dealt with the problems properly to begin with, so if you start over, the problems are still there. That makes sense. She must deal with these things and grow. She has a great fourth dimensional energy. She has a great love for humanity in many ways, doesn't she? Yes, does. And I do, not, do not see her that way. And because she has put up a wall of defense against these things, it has caused them to not see who she really is. She must show herself in her true, truest form to everyone, just as you must. And you must tell her, I'm, I think we should talk about this. I think that the problem is not going to be solved by moving. I don't think that you're going to uh, find that there is friendlier people on the greener grass on the other side. It is a tough thing to be a parent. I know that she is pressuring you. But she is also afraid of, of exposing who she, who she really is to others. And she's afraid that some others may harm her. Isn't that true? Probably. I don't always know. If there's a chance that she could be harmed, find out. That may be a reason to change a location, but it would be because the other persons are in inherently evil or negative. I do not like the word evil. I like the word negative. But you must have a communication with her that goes deeper than just, this is what I want for this reason. You must tell her that there are other reasons that a change may not work. Does then, well, 
I, I don't want to go any farther into that. I could go more personally into that, but I don't want to do that at this time. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. You're thank welcome. Thank you. Ish, is it possible, do you have time for some more questions? I have a few yes, questions. I have, I have yes, I do have time for more questions. Yeah, people are asking. Um, uh, Jess wanted to know if you could tell about uh, your strong connection to each other and how the he her healing is going at this time. If Jess is a man, I apologize. So, One moment. There is some c confusion there. Hold on one moment. Your healing is coming along. But you must remember that you must, you are part of the healing as well. And you are sending energies and uh, thought processes to your body and your spirit. So think very positively about your healing. I know that sometimes you doubt it and sometimes there is, there are times when you drop into a feeling that it is not working or whatever, but you are doing fine. Keep a positive attitude and know, know that God is a healer and that there is healing energies all around you. It, it's just that you have to accept them, that they are real, that you know they exist and they are going to be part of who you are. You do have a future that is positive and these energies that come to you that tell you negative things will just try to bring you down and not move you forward, but your healing is going well. As far as our connection, yes, I do have a connection to you. I am spiritually part of uh, what is going on with you in many ways. And I am a, an ambassador to this planet from the draconian people, but I have to tell you that your draconian past has flared up a little bit just recently, but I still love you. Uh, it's not a bad thing necessarily. You, it is a learning process. It is something that you are learning, and uh, perhaps you don't even know what it, it is that you're dealing with. But uh, yes, we've had past lives together. Thank you. Um, there's a question from uh, Christina. And she says that in previous uh, teachings, um, it's been stated that dragons are narcissistic and that they only have love for themselves. Then in another teaching she heard, um, she heard them referred to, draconians referred to as dragons. And she says, I don't feel this is an accurate representation of dragons. Can you please clarify? There are those out there that would put negative connotations on dragons on reptilians, on all those that are misunderstood uh, by those that are channeling the, this information or those that have a dislike for the, the, these particular beings. There are reasons for this. There are those in your history that have been eaten by dragons, have been, have been faulted by dragons, have had very bad histories with some of the draconians and dragons in the past. Now, they're still bringing up these uh, emotions that they have felt about dragons in the past into the present. And there, there are some that are still that way, but they cannot generalize all the population of draconians and reptilians in those ways. Yes, it's a misrepresentation. M there are many dragons and draconians and reptilians that have moved forward and advanced and have evolved into uh, perhaps not wonderful creatures, but they've been involved into maybe neutral creatures. Some have, the friendly reptilians have actually gr grown into a great positivity. The Zespod reptilians are uh, learning more positivity and have grasped that it does have its uses. The white dragons have, have often been good to humans, 
And many of the ra and all dragons that I know have have stopped eating humans and stopped eating any beings that they know that are sentient or have intelligence. So this is a great movement forward. So you cannot throw these uh, these kinds of words around in general about uh, all dragons, all reptilians, and all uh, draconians. Okay, thank you very much. And then uh, just another question, and it's from Pete, and Pete says, I'm experiencing some kind of energy draining, and if it's a situation or a being or a person, can I ask for help to restore my energy? Also, I am a star child, and I'm experiencing some major issues with my life and would like to ask for assistance from my guides. Excellent. Well, let me tell you about the draining of energy. That is happening to a lot of people. There's many uh, energies coming from space, the sun, the earth, that will, for star children and those of high fourth dimensional energy, drain you right out because you, you're not used to experiencing these kinds of energies in such densities. So, yes, uh, I understand that. And you're probably um, saying that you feel like it's almost a sickness. Believe me, others have been going through it, um, and it is what it is. You will, it will, you will come out of it eventually. Now, as far as being a star child, an indigo child, a crystal child, all these things, yes, you have to deal with these things. The problem is, is neg negativity is easy to grasp on this dimension. It's much harsher in this dimension than what you're used to in your starseed dimensions. And so when it comes about, you do not know how to handle it correctly, and it can be very defeating at times. It can be very uh, depressing at times and zap your strength as well. So that's part of the draining as well. But you're going through a stressful time right now. You must remember that positivity is the example that you must give. You must not turn to anger, negativity, or defeat. And I see that you are really trying in many different ways, but sometimes you, you fall victim to this, the, the strength of the density. Let me give you some energy. I'm going to come around you, and I'm going to give you a blessing. Actually, I'm going to do it right now. Vi sochat sovjetet turavets, anga ashjevjetu ona notati eskjetu otua. Nakret sunjevjetu watunjets no kvati vata. Mata anzavaji vjur asunduna. Nitsitivati nekaga mohanju aya osvizjenzo. Zosha zviazhi vjur tu krata. That blessing goes out to more than one of you. Because there's more than one of you that are going through exactly the same thing that he is going through. And the blessing is this. May you rise up and strengthen in the, in the dimension that you belong. You are no longer part of a light dimension, but a dense one that is difficult at times. But let's not look at it that way. Let's brighten it up with the light and the strength that is given by God. The strength that is now part of who you are, and you must find it and use it. Bring it up and shine a light on it so that it becomes stronger. Water it, fertilize it, and make it who you are because it is you. You are someone special, and you need to be who you are, and when you are who you are in the greatest of those terms, then your problems become less because no one can defeat that who you should be. Thank you very much. Um, and then one last question, and I don't know if you have time to answer this, but um, uh, uh, Infuit uh, 432 asks, 
Can you tell us an educational story about the history leading up to the golden age of Atlantis? The history leading up to it? Yes. Well, the Earth, the Earth was very young in some respects. There were there were people on it, but there were not a lot of very intelligent people. There were the the Egyptian civilization had was intelligent, of course. They were probably the the pinnacle of of uh, the Earth at that time before the uh, well when the Atlanteans were there, the actually the Egyptians developed during that time into a very intellectual species. But the, uh, the um, Atlanteans were there before the Egyptians were a great species or a great people. But of course, you know, this planet was filled with all kinds of aliens at that time. Uh, there were many people from different worlds coming to this planet to do different things. There was some great uh, civilizations that were smaller and they were trying to teach and seed this particular planet for uh, particular reasons. And those reasons, as you know, are for the, the benefit of right now. But before the Atlanteans came, there are many civilizations that were sort of barbaric. There were many civilizations that were prime, evil, um, uh, cave dwellers, things of this nature. But in the process of them learning about all the different aliens also that were on this planet, they became, a, this was just an ideal place for them to uh, bring up a, a society that was a, a sort of a beacon in the solar system because there was other civilizations in the in this uh, solar system as well and so it was sort of a nice area a good central place it was strategic it was well um it, the weather was good for the most part it wasn't the same as it is now but it was very good it was much warmer back then there was much more tropics. There were some dinosaurs still around, even with with uh, the Atlanteans coming. But um, I do not don't know how to explain the leading up to it, except that they chose where where they wanted to be, and they started to uh, set things up. I think that's the best I can do for right now. It's very vague and very general, but to go into a great deal of history or a great deal of, deal of detail would would not be helpful at this moment no problem okay um uh, Leela has one more question for you if you would take it. yes uh, I still have to connect to mine can you hear me yes okay I still have to connect to mine white dragons uh, could you tell me something more about them and where are they located? If it's they're legal? under the Scandinavian area on the Earth, they're subterranean. They're under the Scandinavian, Finland, Norway, Sweden area, and that uh, extends under the ocean, under the fjords, and un into the ocean for a bit. But they are actually beautiful, beautiful dragons. Um, they have uh, they're quiet uh, more than some of the other dragons they are quiet and <coughs> they have uh, uh, they do have a mission it's a positive one but it cannot be exposed at this time but you will be able to make contact with them your white dragon's name you already know do you great I want, uh, that's wonderful because I don't want to uh, bring public their names. Correct. So, I, do, I think that your name, you already know it. Yeah. So, th I, so they are, are they in my meditation healing? Are, are they coming to my meditation healing? In astral, they do come. Uh -huh. uh, but they will come, but they do not stay for the whole meditation because they are not ready for that yet. 
but I they are them. getting used to your energy and getting used to humans again right I understand completely so here is I have a, I have a message for you from your beloved Carolina from England she's sending you love and her heart is crying for you so Carolina sending you love and blessings thank you I miss her very much we haven't spoken directly for a little while yes Thank you for the friendship. Thank you for your amazing wisdom of words. Thank you for everything. Thank you that you exist. Thank you that you can represent Draconian in such a wonderful, wonderful way. So we can learn, expand, and unite. Unite. All Thanks. of us. Unite. Thank you. Thank you, Ish. I don't Your know if there's any other questions in the room. Oh, David has a question. Excuse me. Uh, yes, um, in alignment with uh, her talking about being united and the previous question or about the Zeta Grays. Before we had a, I hosted a webinar and someone came through that um, seemed to be the catalyst for their change to be a little more positive. That uh, one of them had a baby, and I'm wondering, is there a way to send them a gift? And if that is a good At idea. At this time, the only gifts that you can send to those that are off world are spiritual gifts and your blessings and your love and your acceptance. But physical gifts are not possible at this time. But one day they will be possible and one day uh, they will accept them. But they are accepting your blessings and your gifts of love. And, the, and your gifts of prayers already. So just send the intention? And your gifts of healing. Yes, thank you. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ish. Um, I don't see any other questions in the chat, so... Um, Excellent. Do you wish to stay with us, or do you, do you have anything um, else? If you, there's someone else that wants to come, I can leave. It's if up there to are you. no more questions? I don't have any more questions. All the questions from the chat and all the questions from the rooms have been addressed. All right. Then I will go. There are others that want to come. I don't know what their messages are, but um, thank you for listening, and I love you all dearly. Remember what I said about the importance of treating your children and being very personal with them, no matter if they're indigo or not. No matter if they're star seed or not, no matter if they are whatever, crystal or not, you must always be closely united with your children in this day and age. It is important. The family union unit is disintegrating much too quickly on this planet. Thank you for that. Thank you for caring about our children. Much love. Much love.